Hi everybody, Colin Stevenson here, joined again with my hero John Lenhart. Hi John, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Now today we are on the last of our whys, as far as I'm aware, and it's teacher why today. Now John has left this until last because teacher why is the most annoying of people and John is going to explain this to us right now. Right, so remember the why is the effect they want to have on other people. So there's seven of these intangible drivers and the teacher wants you to understand. So what happens is, is basically, these are the know-it-alls. <laughs> the, the thing about teachers are, is, and, and it's funny because I, I'm a teacher how, I explain things. A teacher why wants you to understand, I want to actually teach. So what happens with a teacher why is the reason why teachers, and I'm talking about intangible driver uniqueness, not necessarily education, but the reason why teachers are so smart is they get energy from teaching other people. And the way our brain works is we only get 25% of information directly. We only learn 25 directly. That's why we have to repeat everything three times. You learn 75% by teaching. Again, if you have a model from the mind and the brain, you learn these brain hacks. We can help teachers, educators, help the kids get smarter three times faster by encouraging the teachers to have the kids teach each other. You actually learn more doing that. So what this, the, the secret about teachers is in, in an intangible driver is teachers learn just enough about something so they can teach it to other people and looks really smart. So that's why we look at them and go, oh, they're know-it-alls, they're always teaching. But they get energy teaching and the act of teaching makes them smarter. It's not the act of learning. Yeah. You know, and our buddy, you know, doc, Dr. Russ Lakoff, that was one of the big things he was trying to get across to people, you know, 20, 30 years ago, no one could understand. You want to teach in order to learn. You don't learn in order to learn, you teach in order to learn. So these teachers, what they do is, is they learn just enough to teach and the teaching makes them smarter. And then we think they're spending all their time learning. Yeah. No, they're spending all their time showing off. Yeah, I love that because, oh, right, okay. So teachers like to teach and because they are no at all, people get very, very annoyed by them because they're like, they're just trying to teach me. Now with them not stopping and understanding that this teacher we need to build people's energy. We need to allow other people to build their energy. So by listening for just a couple of minutes and just taking that time, which is respectful as a human being as well, and taking that time to listen to this other person, what they're actually doing is allowing this person to gain energy and you know to feel more empowered, which means they will probably want to teach less, which means that they will then, once they've done it, they will then allow you to speak back to them and tell them what you know, because then they'll learn from you. So that then they can teach that onto other people, am I right? Right, so the way to dissolve the issue is to ask them to teach you something. Yeah. The act of teaching causes them to be connected. The reason why teachers are so awkward is, how do you start a conversation with someone in order to teach them? You do it by going, hey, do you know what the tallest mountain in the world is? And it's like, oh my goodness, like, and it's awkward. Yeah. It is awkward for a teacher to start a conversation. So now here's the thing. Teacher how, which is what I am, will teach you. You see me explaining stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of annoying. And because and like Colin just said, ask me to teach you something, I'll teach you, and then I'll calm down and I'll stop talking. But we're talking about teacher why. So teacher why wants you to understand how do they do it? Well, there's seven types of teachers because there's seven intangible drivers and there's a why and a how. So what I'm going to talk about today is teacher why. So these are people that want you to understand, but there's seven versions of them. So this is what, one of the reasons I want to leave this to the end is we've covered all of the other six intangible drivers. So now what I want to do is I want to take you through this list of teacher whys and show you what it looks like to deal with them. So the first one on the list is teacher, teacher. Yeah. So remember, when we, if you take the test to find out your tangible driver, the test goes something like this. You and I go to an ice cream shop. You get an ice cream cone, sit at a table. I get an ice cream sundae balanced on a plate. 
And when I come over to sit down to you, I drop it. Now, you can have all these responses. And we try to figure out seven general responses. I'm going to give you seven specific responses. So if a person was teacher, teacher, which we, we think is, you know, normal, what they would say to you is the Sunday wasn't balanced correctly on the plate because it was warped. That's the, what they'd respond. When you dropped your Sunday, they'd go, you know, the Sunday wasn't balanced correctly on the plate because the plate was warped. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you think about it, um, Spock from Star Trek is teacher, teacher. Yeah. He explains everything. Why? He, he, so you understand it. It's just straightforward. It's very logical. It's very dry. It's very boring. Um, in, in sports, the color commentators tend to be teacher, teacher. Well, you know, here's why that happened. And they start explaining it. Okay. So that's straightforward. So if you think about it, I want to do that one first, because that is the reason why. The reason why the Sunday fell is the plate was warped. There's six other types of teacher wise, but how they want you to understand is by not telling you why. Yeah. So this is, this is what's so frustrating about these teacher wise. Okay. The most famous type of teacher wise is teacher perceiver. Okay. This is Sherlock Holmes. If you're familiar with the office um, TV show from, from the United States, yeah. Dwight Schrute. Okay, yeah. Your perceiver. If you're familiar with Parks and Recreation, Ron Swanson. So this is what they would say. You'd walk over, your Sunday would fall down, and they would say, it's a long walk from the counter to the table. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And so you, you're sitting there like they are looking at you like because the plate is warped. It's a long walk. To, it's a long way to walk with a plate that's warped is what they're saying. If you go, yeah, it is a long walk, they'll be like, that's what I said. If you say, oh, because the plate is warped, they would say to you, that's what I said. Did they say that? <laughs> We're going to talk about Perceiver House later, you know, in another episode, because it, they cause a lot of problems with people and a lot of problems with themselves. Yeah. They, in order for them to feel like you get them, you would have to take the why, the plate was warped, that they never stated, and use that to say something else. You'd have to yeah. look at them and say, well, this, is, this place is pretty cheap with their, with their plates. <laughs> yeah. no one ever said the plate was warped but they seem to understand it so one of the things about teacher wise is they love to solve problems yeah teacher wise are problem solvers so what you'll see is you'll see engineers you'll see doctors are mm -hmm. teacher wise okay and they're not they're really driven. They're not really interacting servers. They don't get along with people. But a lot of doctors and engineers will talk like this, and they're really hard to talk to. Yeah. Teacher compassion. So a teacher compassion would say, it wasn't your fault they gave you a warped plate. Yeah. You still would have to piece together, oh, because the warped plate is what caused it to fall. And that's what they'd want you to realize. It's not, they're showing compassion, but they want, they're only going to feel connected if you go, oh, the plate was warped. They would actually go, <laughs> get they would yeah. like that, okay? Teacher giver, they'd go, I'm going to buy you a Sunday on a better plate. <laughs> so what I like to say is if you think about it, these are like advertising executives. I'm going to buy you a better plate. And it's like, they didn't even say the plate was warped. But the giver wants to, when we talked about this last week, the giver wants to make yeah. everything. They want to give you something and they want to make it better. Yeah. So that's where it's like they, you still don't understand that the plate is warped. And if you don't say, oh, because the plate is warped, they do not feel like they connect with you at all. Yeah. So the problem with these teacher characters is, is they want you to understand something, but they, ne they tend not to explain why. It's your job to do it. So they're a puzzle. Yep. They're exhausting that work. Teacher server would say, 
I'm going to tell them they ought to put Sundays on better plates. Again, still not saying it's warped, okay? And the thing is, is, is uh, Batman is a teacher server. Mm-hmm. Okay, he's a problem solver, and but and if you think about how Batman talks, it, you know, especially in the old version, that's that's how Batman would talk that way. Teacher administrator would say, "Ted and Marsha." They would look away from you dropping it. They go, "Ted and Marsha," you know. Did you see how warped that plate was? And it's like House in in the United States. His character House is teacher administrator, so he was based on. Sherlock Holmes, who's teacher perceiver, yeah. but the twist was they made this guy who couldn't get along with people have to, through administration, do everything through people. Yeah. And that's the conflict, is he can't get anything done unless there's people, but he's always trying to solve the problem, solve the puzzle, and it sees the teacher why. And then finally, teacher exhorter. And um, <laughs> they're really interesting because um, Parks and Rec has a character, Chris Traeger, uh, Rob Lowe plays him, who's teacher exhorter. And you know, he's always like, this is literally the best, you know, banana split I've ever had. You know, and he, he always says that because he's always talking exhorter how. So he would say, next time we'll eat at the counter so you won't have to use a plate. <laughs> and <it's> like, <laughs> wow, you're really excited about going to the counter and I don't understand why. And they would look at you like, you understand why? Because the plate was warped. You know, and they would say, and, and then Parks and Rec, it happens, they go, because the plate was warped. Because the plate was warped, he would say. He'd get all excited because he got, he got the why. I got it across. Personal trainers are teacher exhorters. You and I have talked about exhorter teacher yeah. life coaches. Personal trainers are teacher exhorter. They talk and rah rah, get going, come on, work yeah. hard, do all the stuff. And it's like, and they're trying to get you to understand this why and, and to get forward and do all this stuff. So that's basically these teacher whys. They're really, really, they make for great characters on TV shows. Yeah. They're really frustrating because they want you to understand. And unless they're teacher, teacher, and really dry, so they bore you that way, they don't <laughs> tell you why. And so it's a game to interact with these people. Yeah, no. Again, the game is for them, they want you to learn. So they'll only teach you so much. They'll teach you the first half of the sentence, knowing that you can put the rest of the sentence in to fit. And when you don't, this is the point where they become frustrated. You know, it's the point where they think, well, they've not got this. I might need to put in another hint or another tip, you know, to allow the people to kind of go on, I would imagine. So when we meet teachers like I have engaged with a teacher recently and it was actually over your we had this conversation over your um your process for the mind brain you know over the the uniqueness test that I encourage everyone to do because if everyone knew their uniqueness and they lived according to that what will happen is they will live a full life full of energy and that will then go on to other people now I had said to this person, I knew they were teacher administrator. I knew it straight away, right? And I said this to you before. And when, when and I said, I would like you to, or I can't remember if it was administrator. It was administrator, teacher, or teacher administrator. I can't remember what I put them down as. But when they came in and I said to them, I would like everyone to, to take this test, please, so that I'm able to speak to you the way that you deserve to be spoken to understand the way that you will talk to me so that I feel I understand you. And I get this given back to me. I get given, no, thank you very much for this. This is just a personality test. This is this, this is this. You can't teach me. I've already done this. And right. And I was like, wow, 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 wow. I've asked you to do one thing for you, not for me, so that it can develop our relationship and develop our communication and make things stronger. But you already know better and you know so much that you can't be taught. Teacher, so you just said it, teacher wise, you cannot teach them. And that's that's what makes them doubly frustrating is that they're so used to everything going this way, it's not supposed to go this way. And so one of the things I say is, is when people write a book, okay, if they're writing literature, they are perceiver how. Great yeah. literature is very descriptive, perceptive, 
and it's in and it's and it's uh, poetic. So every person who writes literature and people who write these great songs, they are perceiver how. And we'll talk about the hows as we go through the hows. Okay, servers can write books because servers can move to perceiver and they can move to teacher. The other people that write books are teachers. And the worst thing, and, and when teachers write books, a lot of them are the how-to yeah. or the self-help or the personal growth. There's yeah. a lot of those are that, not through stories. Yeah. They're going to list textbook, like they write textbooks. They write these self-help books. So the problem is, is that these teachers, they teach, you know, directly, they teach at you. And the last thing they want to do is be taught. Yeah. Okay. So what happens is, is they instantly negate everything and they don't read anybody else's books. Yes. One of the things I've noticed is, is if you write an author who's a teacher, they will not read the book you send them. They will not, they will not have read any. Have you read this book? No, I haven't. Like they do not read. If they're a writer, they avoid reading other people's books because they don't want to find out that what they wrote is wrong. Yeah. And they live in fear that way. And so teachers, this is why teachers tend to be the most socially isolated group. And, and they make things worse on themselves because they're humans. They're not robots. If they were robots, they would intentionally want to learn because how are you going to teach people if you don't learn yeah. something? New? Oh, you're right. I should learn something. So they should definitely learn something new so that they can teach other people. And if we were robots, that would happen. Because they're humans, they don't get energy from people teaching them. Yep. They get energy from teaching other people. And they don't feel connected unless they do the hows I listed. So now a lot of these troubled kids are teacher-wise with these weird off-setting hows. Yes. And so when they're middle school and they try to connect with kids, they're saying something, hoping that these middle school kids can figure out the why behind what they said. The kids don't. They get frustrated with the kids and kind of go, you're an idiot. You can't teach anybody anything. And don't try to teach me because you didn't understand what I was saying. And then these kids go, well, leave that kid alone. He's a, he's a know-it-all. Yeah, and you just you just picked up on a great point. I was literally we were zincing brain there. When the kid goes up at the front of the class to do show and tell, you've always got the teachers that have to teach. So you'll get the, the other kind of you know the other intangible drivers. But when a teacher goes up to the front, the class has to learn from that child. And the, ch the children don't like that because they look as if they're acting out with their age range, as if they're trying to be a teacher. So that's where the kids can't connect with them on this. You know, you watch it in films, you watch it in programs on the, the television, um, and you watch people and they go up to do show and tell and they've got this fantastic model and they break it down and they're so, they're hyped by it because they, they're able to teach. And then you get the one person in the crowd that goes, they say something back and they, they try and put something in to add to that. And then they're deflated. That's when they crash. Right. And that's why it's really important to understand these intangible drivers. You know, I think if, if, if you're an adult, like the guy you're talking about, you, he knows he has a hard time connecting with people. He knows he's frustrated interacting with people. And, he, and it's really easy for teacher wise to think everybody in the world's an idiot. And it's like, it's their way of rationalizing why they don't, can't connect with people. But it, when we help people understand their intangible driver, then they go, I'm trying for them to understand, but I'm doing it through this way. Oh, yeah. it's, it's frustrating for them. And then you can figure out how to match them up with other people, but also how to express that. When it comes to kids, this is a really how we're creating a lot of EBD kids yeah. is we are setting them up and we're not giving these kids communication guidelines yeah. to interact. And so these kids interact and these teacher wise are some of the first kids to get bullied.
Yeah, and I agree with that. And uh, it's a shame that we, we don't recognise it, you know, and that the creativity and things are coming out of the education system as well. That sense of freedom, that release. So why are they not getting the release and the creativity that they should have as a human being? They're, not, they're also not getting understood as well. So that's double frustration. And it does become very difficult moving on. So if anyone has a teacher and they've recognised any of these traits, and their children, ask them to teach you. It doesn't matter if they're five years old and you're 55. Ask your child to teach you about something they did today. What did you do? I did math. Okay, well, teach me the sums that you did. Two plus two equals four. And this becomes from two. Get them to do it. They will then have it out of their system. They feel understood. They feel connected. And then they'll go and play in the room or in the garden. Or, do, you know, you've given them the attention that they needed that boost, and then they'll go. If you don't understand them, they will keep nipping at more attention that they're not getting. Right, so if you say, I understand. So the, one of the quick ways to find out is if your kid says something to you and you go, I have no idea why they're telling me that. If you go, I understand. And they get smiling, and they, like you said, walk out of the room, connect, and it's like, okay, I got a teacher. I got a teacher, why now? Now I need to figure out the how. Like now I need to figure out how they're trying to get me to understand yeah. this. What do I see? And then the sooner you can do that, the sooner you can help them own their own uniqueness. Absolutely. They can help others. This Your kid can actually help others understand themselves yeah. so that they can build better relationships. And just, just while we're touching on this before we wrap up, do you know you can love a child as much as you possibly can? You can dote on them. You can really push every part of love. If you don't connect with them and their uniqueness, it won't count for absolutely anything. So if you have got a, a we'll call them, we won't call them weirdos, right? We'll just call them special because we're all special. We're all unique. And if you've got a teacher stroke something and you need to bring this out in them, you can literally not give them a hug for the rest of their life and they will feel more appreciated by you using their uniqueness with them. Right. So it's safe and creative. Safe yeah. is your ability to connect. It can, do you know how to talk? And we talked you know, earlier in the week about communication guidelines. That if you know how to talk safely, you'll make a connection. And once a connection is made, then you can create a relationship. You can create something yeah. more. So you're right. That's the key is these uniquenesses help you be safe and creative. Connect and then love in order to create something more. Yeah, no, that's amazing. No, thank you, John, for talking us through these because the teacher is very awkward and we all know teachers and we all know the annoying ones that we do connect with and that we like, but we tend to go, I'm really not in the mood for their conversation today. I'm really not in the mood for going to that party because all they'll do is talk at us. Now, for the people, just before John and I go, go to the parties, go and speak to them and ask them to teach you something right at the start of the party and you will have a good night otherwise. <laughs> Thank you very much, John. I look forward to talking to you soon. Take care. Bye.